What's up? Gubala Krishnan here on another episode of Drive. So in the last episode, I talked about training and all the different kind of uh, training that you can actually take in order to get better at what you do and hopefully become the best at what you do. Now, in this episode, I want to talk about a specific company that I've been to uh, this year uh, that provides excellent online marketing social media training and they are based in Singapore. So that company is known as Happy Marketer and I've got an interview coming up on Google Hangout with Rachit Dayal, the uh, founder of Happy Marketer and he's going to be talking about how he started Happy Marketer and his journey so far in trying to build a successful startup right out of Singapore which well Singapore you know they are our neighbors we love them we hate them but either way um, starting a startup from Singapore I'm sure there are many challenges that he has to face as well now the thing about Happy Marketer is that I've been for their trainings I've been for the SEO training Google AdWords training um, and also uh, some other trainings organized by Happy Market as well. Now, with other trainings that I've been for in Malaysia from other companies, the problem is that I don't want to sound, you know, like I'm freaking arrogant, but the reality is that in most cases, I know more than what the trainer knows. So I'm basically wasting my time going for a lot of training, uh, especially organized by Malaysian companies, you know. Um, but the training that I've been with Happy Marketer was really, really in-depth and it really blew my mind. And this Rachid Dayal was the um, trainer on that day. And this guy really knows his stuff. The reason is because he doesn't just provide training, but Happy Marketer is actually also an, a digital agency that actually does SEO, Google AdWords, uh, and all kinds of optimization uh, for clients, for many, many big clients in Singapore, Malaysia and regionally as well. So anyway, I'm going to head to my office uh, right now and the interview is going to be on Google Hangout. So stay tuned for my interview with Rachid Dial, uh, founder of Happy Marketer. Ciao. That's an interesting question. I'll try to answer it in as few lines as possible. <laughs> um, so I guess I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a speaker, and I'm a marketer. So I've been an entrepreneur for a little over nine years now. And I run a company called Happy Marketer, based in Singapore. It's a digital marketing agency. And we service uh, mid to large size clients across Asia. As part of that, I'm a speaker. I do a lot of trainings. So I, I train and I speak about Google AdWords, about SEO, about content marketing, social media, digital advertising, UI, UX. Um, I have a title of Google Regional Trainer, where Google hires me to go speak at, at events. So I do a lot of speaking. Uh, that forces me to stay at the edge of the digital marketing game. And I think most critically, I'm a marketer. I've been a marketer for the longest of all of this. And uh, I picked up a couple of good books in, in college. There was one uh, called Guerrilla Marketing by J. Conrad Levinson. Another one called A Definitive Guide to AdWords by Perry Marshall. And I, got, I fell in love with marketing. Um, and I've, I've loved it ever since. And today I run campaigns and I, I plan strategies for some fairly large brands. Some airlines, Royal Brunei Airlines and Tiger Air. Uh, hotels across all of Asia. Uh, banks, Standard Chartered Bank. Uh, retail, Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf, Ferro Rocha. Uh, telcos, uh, publishing houses. So that, that marketing part kind of defines me. Um, and entrepreneurship is something I use to get to cool marketing campaigns. So that's what I am and that's what Happy Marketer does. So all of that, uh, analytics is a big piece. We're one of the few Google Analytics premium resellers in the world. So a lot of, we do a lot of analytics work to actually justify the digital spend. Um, and within social media and SEO and AdWords, the game is always changing. You know, we used to do search ads not that long ago. Today, most uh, digital spends go to remarketing, go to display ads. So that change is always gaming. Uh, change, that game is always changing in that little universe, always trying to innovate, change, and adapt to how consumers are using the web. 
Uh, so we, we try to do trainings because the world's always changing. Our, our clients who are usually digital marketing managers or CMOs, they're trying to grapple with the fact that now they've got some budgets, but they don't know how to spend them on digital. On, on TV, on newspaper, they had a plan. They would just push the button. Creatives would get made, stuff would get pushed out. On digital, they don't know. Every year, everything's so brand new. So that's why we do trainings. Uh, because we have to stay at the edge and our clients have to stay at the edge. And so to do that, we try to bring the best of what's happening in the Western world to what I like to call unloved Asia. My partner Prantik coined that, which is, you know, China is sexy, India is sexy, uh, the US and Europe, of course, have a lot of developments, but not that many people give a second thought about us in Southeast Asia, East Asia, the Middle East. So we want to bring that stuff here and then customize it and uh, and, and develop and execute it so that later these case studies go back out in the world and the rest of the world is thinking of us in this belt as kind of being on cutting edge. Um, so that's what the trainings are about. They are about AdWords and, and Google advertising. They're about SEO and content marketing. They're about UI, UX and design. They're about analytics. They're about social media marketing. Every little piece that today is digital marketer needs to know about. So, a bit of an accident actually. I used to, I studied in Singapore at the National University of Singapore. And they had a couple of courses on technopreneurship, te technology entrepreneurship. And that was the first time I was thinking about business in any form. I was a, I was a programmer. I was studying computer science. I loved algorithms. I loved building systems and so on. But I suddenly realized that I, I love these stories of, of tech companies even more. Uh, we were doing case studies of, you know, Sony Betamax versus VHS in the 80s or, you know, DVD Dash R versus Plus R in the 2000s. And I realized that these stories are like, like history to history buff for me. And uh, more than the, the core technology behind the product, I love the positioning. I love the, the political fighting. I loved how they got that from the initial lab to the hands of customers over the long period of time. So that's when I realized that I like I like business, I like entrepreneurship, and more importantly, I like the marketing part of it, the front-facing part of it. So that's what got me interested in, in marketing, apart from you know, a couple of books that kind of sparked that. And back then, uh, NUS had this tie-up with the University of Pennsylvania and, and the Wharton School. You would study in the evenings uh, courses at, at UPenn, and then you would work in a start startup. And you've heard the story before. Uh, I worked for a, a startup in the US. and. Uh, and it was, there was four people there and I was the only marketing guy and I was complete freedom. I loved it. So I came back uh, after that little stint to Singapore. I realized the, the digital or the marketing world here was very amateur back then. Digital was about selling clients expensive websites or email, which wasn't relevant in the age of search. And of course, social, which was taking off back then, you know, it, there was MySpace and Orkut. It wasn't quite what we have today, but it was something. So. Entrepreneurship just came out of, I love marketing, I wanted to do marketing, and I didn't have enough avenues here. I said, forget it, I'll do it myself, and I started the business. So the first three years, I think, like you are, all entrepreneurs know, the good part is there is abundance of energy, enthusiasm. Just love it. You're off on a brand new thing, and any any challenge seems insurmount, you know, surmountable. Uh, so that is the best part. I love the long hours. I love every single move. I love strategy planning at the back of napkins. The tough side was I didn't know anything about business. So there was no money. <laughs> so for a while I, I, I loved what I did in terms of marketing. <laughs> um, I would survive on Maggie for the first three years because um, that's kind of all the business that I could uh, get back then. In fact, when I compare the revenues of my year one versus year nine, which is now, the revenues for the company are 100x. And now when I look back, I realize I knew almost nothing about business. It would have been nice for me to study some of that or have tutelage or focus on learning some of that. So the, I think things that have become, um, that have changed from back then till now that have made the difference. The, the most important one is people. In the early years for the first three and a half, four years of my business, it was just me. Me trying to be a freelancer, consultant, whatever combination of that. And today we have Happy Market has about 25 people. 25 people who kind of believe in the mission, who have the same interests as me, who feel like they're building something. It is just so much better to have, to be working as part of a team. So that, that people part is really critical from getting the first business partner 
to the first senior hire to all the different junior hires now i spend most of my time selling happy marketer to potential future happy marketers and telling them how they would fit into this little giant piece going forward so i think that's one big difference the the second difference is sales aggressiveness uh and sales aggressiveness to what the market wants in the beginning i wanted to do adwords and analytics because that was the hot thing i learned in the us and came back but after 4 years i realized this market doesn't want that they you can't really build a business out of just selling search ads and just analytics services so social media came about digital ads came about building of assets and marketing automation all the stuff so what's changed is a, a much more intense focus on what people will buy and then selling harder on it and that's required kind of a lot of the dissolving of my ego to go from what i wanted to do versus what the world will accept um so i think those are two big difference i would say yeah, the culture at happy marketer is that of a challenger i think in the world of marketing there have been stalwarts and there've been uh, giants who built entire businesses and of course in any business that lasts a long time there is complacency there is comfort zones and i feel like the world of marketing hasn't pushed as far as fast as consumers have pushed in terms of the change from offline to digital and then within digital to the newer channels rather than just a website or just email so we try to challenge the norm we educate and then we we challenge our clients and say what is it that you can do 3 years from now how about we do that in 1 year how about we leap frog a generation and move ahead so everybody at happy marketer gets driven by doing something amazing for the client like each of our clients we wake up in the morning and we check everything that's going on with them and we really you know we want to feel because our clients feel for us the best of our clients know my team's birthdays they know who got married and where they went for the honeymoon things i don't know so i think it's a very very close relationship between the best clients and the agencies that service them so that challenger mindset that relationship is really critical and we want to we want to build something that lasts decades in other industries like business consulting you have your mckinsey's and your bain in advertising you've got your ogilvy's and mccann's companies that have survived for decades and they have built something with legacy and in the internet marketing world 99% of the companies are one shot wonders like when you and i would get started there was a big internet marketing wave where people would sell books and info courses and once you saw that you knew that thing would not be valid even 3 months later let alone 30 years later so a lot of what i want to focus on is how do i create something that outlasts me that you know that name lives on and it adapts and it changes so that's the kind of attitude that i think all the happy marketers have as well